Hi, everyone. I thought I would talk today about a topic that came up at the breakfast table at the monastery this morning, which is what to do when your mind is just driving you crazy and you can't seem to stop it. One of my teachers, Hal Stone, talked about it like radio station K-R-A-Z-Y, that your mind is tuned into this radio station and you can't turn it off. So um, there are various techniques, and I think I'll do a whole series and talk about different ways to help when your mind is just yammering on and on. Often it's talking about the past, mistakes you made in the past, reviewing this mistake you made in the past for the 250th time, or terrible anxiety about the future. What if this happens? What if that happens? And somehow it's turned itself on, and the, and the off knob is, is deficient, <laughs> defective, and you can't turn it off. So um, one of the ways to work with a crazy mind is to use mantra or dharani. Mantra and dharani are short phrases. Dharani is usually a bit longer than mantra. Mantra is often just a few syllables. And it's not something that uh, was ever taught to me in Zen practice. I learned about it uh, much later after I'd left training. But I, I find that it can be extremely uh, helpful. The um, Buddha actually talked about ways to work with your mind when your mind is troubled. And he mentioned distraction, substitution, and then crushing difficult thoughts. So mantra actually works in all three ways. Sometimes I think of our mind as like a um, hyperactive attention deficit disordered three-year-old. And it's headed for the electric light outlet with... Um, a um, paper clip or a bobby pin, something metal, and you know it's going to cause suffering. So you pick that three-year-old up and you move them to someplace else. You distract them with something. Oh, come look over here. Oh, look, I have a coloring book. Or let's read this book. Or wouldn't you like to cut this paper with scissors? Or let's go outside and ride your bike, your tricycle. So we know when children are headed for trouble. We, we have ways of, of distracting them and bringing them back to something that's wholesome. And the th same thing uh, applies to our mind. If our mind is headed in a direction or in that old groove that we know is leading to suffering or already causing us suffering, we need some emergency measures. And mantra is just such an emergency measure. It uh, qualifies as distraction and it qualifies as substitution. So we take words that are wholesome, wholesome meaning, meaning leading to our happiness, to, to our, ultimately to our enlightenment, and we use those wholesome words to substitute for words that are causing us distress and pain. It's best if the mantra is not an English word. Some of the mantras you know, you may be aware, are not English. Although English words can be used. I know in the Thich Nhat Hanh tradition, sometimes uh, they recommend that you breathe out love and breathe in peace on each breath. So single English words sometimes can be very helpful because they're evocative and they touch the heart as well as the mind. But um, many of the mantras that we use are not English words. For example, the Jizo Durrani, uh, is said in two ways. It can be said in Sino-Japanese, which is Om Ka Ka Kabi San Ma E Soa Ka. Or it can be said in Sanskrit, which is Om Ha 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 Visma E Svaha. So we chant it both ways at the monastery. In our morning service, we chant Om Ka Ka Kabi San Ma E Soa Ka. The first syllable, Om, you may have heard from other mantras, like Om Mani Padme Om, which is the mantra for uh, Kanon, we say in Japanese, or Avalokiteshvara, or Chinrezi, the Bodhisattva of Compassion. So often mantras begin with Om. And Om is a syllable that evokes the energy, the peace, the serenity of the Absolute and helps bring our mind into an awareness of this absolute peace, this place of serenity within the busyness and sometimes chaotic aspects of our life. 
So the mantra starts with Om, and then it ends with, often with Svaha or Soaka. And that's a phrase that could be translated as, so be it, or in uh, Christian terms it would be Amen, uh, or may it be so, or may it bring uh, good to the world, or even hooray. We don't have an exact translation of it, but it has all of those uh, connotations. So there's the beginning, Om, and the end, Soaka. And in between are the seed syllables. Ka is the seed syllable for Jizo Bodhisattva. A seed syllable is designed to evoke the energies of that particular, um, ener that particular deity or bodhisattva or saint uh, in the world, call them forth, and also to evoke them in our own being. So we have om, ka, ka, kabi, san, ma, e, so, ka. So the ka is specifically designed to evoke the qualities of Jizo Bodhisattva in ourselves. And the qualities of Jizo Bodhisattva are, first, warm benevolence. And that means an open, undefended heart. Now, of course, we don't want an open, undefended heart in all situations. If somebody wants to rob us, then we need to do something else. We need to use our wisdom and get out of the situation. Uh, but a warm, undefended heart, you'd be surprised how often that is actually the best way to be in the world. The second quality of Jizo Bodhisattva is great determination. And another way of saying that is never giving up, never turning back. So carrying that energy of determination, this is my vow, this is my life purpose, I will carry it out. And there may be detours, of course, and of course there will be obstacles in our life. But a, a vow is another practice with Jizo Bodhisattva. That vow helps us helps remind us, oh, this is my direction, this is the way I'm going, and um, I will do everything I can not to be uh, diverted from my course. It's like a compass almost. So great determination, and then unflagging optimism. Uh, Jizo Bodhisattva is, in Japan, considered the patron saint of lost causes because Jizo doesn't believe in lost causes. Jizo says, if there's as much good in a person as a drop of dew or a bit of down, a bit of fluff floating in the air, then I can take that and I can cultivate and grow that so that this person will become a person of benefit in the world. So no matter what our inner critic says about us, no matter uh, how we are worried about our qualities that we haven't been able to change or the difficulties in our, in our mind, our state of mind that we haven't been able to change, they can be changed through practice, and we have to be optimistic about that. So unflagging optimism, and then the uh, next quality is fearlessness. And that comes about because Jizo is aware and teaches us, and our practice also helps us realize this, that the demons are not external to us. The, the demons arise from fear in us. Fear is, is the destroyer of our happiness. And if we can work with fear directly, which is a whole other topic to talk about, and then um, when we walk through fear, then out of that understanding that arises through walking through our fears can arise equanimity and even happiness. Uh, we call those openings or discoveries, and uh, they're a very nice aspect of practice. So the qualities of Jizo Bodhisattva I'll mention again at, at the end, but that's what we're trying to invoke in ourselves and in the world when we uh, recite a mantra. Now the speed of the mantra can be varied, so if the mind is really crazy and just will not quiet down, you can uh, recite the mantra quickly. So you can say, Om Ka 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 Bisan Ma E Soa Ka, add and adding energy, Om Ka 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 Bisan Ma E Soa Ka, Om Ka 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 Bisan Ma E Soa Ka, Om Ka Ka. And that has the aspect of pushing all the difficult thoughts off to the side. And if they're ignored and we don't feed them, then they gradually wither away. And the mantra takes their place, the wholesome quality of the mantra takes their place. Then as the mind quiets down, you can slow down the mantra too. So it becomes Om Ka Ka Kavi San Ma E Soa Ka 
home. And then you can slow it down even more when the mind becomes calm and stable. And you can even say one syllable on the out-breath. Om. In-breath is quiet. Ka. In-breath is silent. Ka. In-breath is silent. Kavi. And so on. Through the mantra. Another way you can do very what I just uh, talked about, having the in-breath be silent, is you can say the whole mantra on the out-breath. So you can say, Om ka 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 visan mai so ka. Silent in breath. Om ka 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 visan mai so ka. Silent in breath. So there are many ways to uh, vary a single mantra, and um, you should experiment with them yourselves and see uh, at this time with what, what my mind is so preoccupied with and so distressed about. How does a mantra help? And how can I vary or change the mantra a little bit to get the best benefit at this time and in this place? So I'll end by uh, wishing you earnestly that the qualities of Jizo Bodhisattva will infuse your life and your work and your path of practice and bring blessings to you. And those qualities are warm benevolence, that is, an open, undefended heart. Great determination, never turning back from our true purpose. Unflagging optimism, there are no lost causes. Our practice can always help us in times of distress. And then fearlessness, the courage that we need to uh, go forward. Please visit our website at sendus.org for more information about our workshops, retreats, and opportunities to practice.